Hi, my name is Cold Bear, and let's start with Gatewalkers. This is not just a standard action hack and slash game, it has a strong survival element implemented, so you will have to drink and eat, also avoid darkness and cold all the time. Well, let's hope that you don't have to clip your nails, wipe your butt and brush your teeth as well. Gatewalkers is a cooperative game where players travel across different worlds in order to save their own. You have to explore procedurally generated lands, face hostile inhabitants and various challenges, like extreme weather conditions, toxic or unbreathable atmosphere, terrifying darkness, penetrating cold, and your mother-in-law. Okay, maybe not the latter. I played the alpha version and honestly I was impressed. The combat was a bit clunky, but the game kept my interest for way longer than I was expecting. This is a fresh take on action RPGs and it really deserves a place in this list. Or maybe a fire place, so you could burn all the survival nonsense out of it. Superfuse an alien threat looms in a new comic book inspired action RPG where you will take on waves on grotesque minions and bosses with up to four friends. Or go on hack and slash killing spree alone and uncover a vast conspiracy that endangers all of humanity. You will become an actual superhero in a world where superpowers are controlled by society's elite. And you know, it's kinda funny. Here you are a legit superhero, and in many other RPG games, you are just a simple villager with some godlike powers you obtain for no reason at all. Yeah. Yeah, you just decapitated a dragon with a fireball of death, revived the inhabitants of the town, eradicated zombies and made everyone's ding-dong longer. Are you some kind of god? Oh no, I'm just a son of blacksmith. Superfuse has procedurally generated levels and developers are bragging about never fighting the same way twice and so on. But hey, that reminds me of the moment when I go to my closest grocery store, Lidl, and I find bread instead of beer in the old place. They occasionally rearrange everything and they are saying that this is a good thing. That is not good, that sucks, but also that means that Lidl is procedurally generated as well. Combat Complex this is a fast-paced sci-fi action RPG. You are alone, facing hordes of enemies and evaporating them to shreds with your legendary guns and armor. Your augmented body hides many devastating abilities, skills and talents, but as always, you will have to unlock them all by leveling up. I can already see a few things I like and a few I don't. In the whole video I haven't noticed any loot drops from enemies, despite that in the description they are promising great loot. That is not good. Well, maybe they will implement the loot dropping part later, but in recent years I saw a few few games that went bankrupt because the looting was lame, like Magic Legends for example. Magic who? Exactly. And another thing I'm not a fan of, confined spaces. Come on, it's not like we don't have PCs that could generate open areas without a sweat. And good thing is that Combat Complex is really fast paced and has a really satisfying combat. Also it has cool enemies, like that centipede giving me actual heebie-jeebies. That is a great work, no doubt. Seelenwald while I was making this video, it was widely thought in many websites that the game will be released in 2023. But while I was writing about it, the real date of Seal and Wall's release in 2024 was dropped by the publisher. So I decided to keep the game in this list anyway. No harm will be done. Also, this is one of the coolest looking isometric games I have stumbled on. Seal and Wall is an action roguelike RPG that combines challenging combat with strategy and resource management. You'll take control of a random adventurers to fight and sneak your way through eldritch horrors roaming the ever-changing halls of Sealand Walls University. If your character dies, it dies for good. You will have to choose a new random adventurer and embark on a new adventure. The visuals and details of the game are really impressive, I can see that developers are injecting a lot of work into it. I have already put it into my wishlist, it looks like a great gem in the making. Endless Dungeon if you know the game called Dungeon of the Endless, then you must erect your ears and eyes for this new upcoming title. From the same developers comes Endless Dungeon. This time they have chosen way cooler isometric projection instead of flat top-down visuals. Endless Dungeon is a roguelite tactical action RPG where you will have to recruit a team of shipwrecked heroes, plunge into a long abandoned space station and protect your crystal against never-ending waves of monsters. Or die trying, get reloaded and try again. So tower defense element is really strong here as well. Sometimes I don't even know how to call some games and what list to assign them into, because a lot of modern games are an insane mix of various genres. Don't get me wrong, that is beautiful, I love experiments. You will be able to play Endless Dungeon alone or co-op with friends. It will also have full gamepad support. Corridon 
At first it looks like a usual hack and slash game, but then you realize that you can turn into the animals you kill. This whole game is filled with crazy animal battles that would not cast a shadow of shame even on National Geographic videos. You can also play it with friends and... Uh, ride them. Yeah, which is not a sexual thing this time. You can actually ride your friends in battle and not in bed. Friends with benefits suddenly have a different meaning. Also, you can achieve more things together, reach unreachable places and so on. I don't know how they will implement this into a single player because you can play alone as well. Game will let you explore different paths in the choice-driven dialogues and the various quests you can take on during your missions to save your people. All that while riding your friend. Dread Hunter. He'll drop into action inside a cutting-edge mech suit, shoot, slash, smash and dash to get onto the highest bounties as a fearless sci-fi monster hunter. You will defeat swarms of screeching monsters and slay Amino's horrors to discover that the biggest dreads in the universe don't have claws and rocket launchers. Wait, what? I don't know. Honestly, I think that this game looks really good and I wasn't even aware of its existence before I started to sculpt this list for you. So here you will enjoy a badass combat experience that rapidly changes between ranged and melee. You will have to keep yourself in a constant motion as the monsters are fast and deadly. I think Dread Hunter looks like some hybrid between classic and modern visuals and the gameplay looks more than cool. Let's hope that it not only looks but will actually be cool as well. Gimli – The Broken Prophecy You'll explore the dark world of Gimli based on Norse mythology, discover forest thickets and mountain trails, explore evil-ridden towns and villages and mysterious tombs full of dangerous underground tunnels. Sounds cool, but looks… well, weird. I don't know why this graphic style was chosen to represent the game, but it kinda reminds me of the early 3D games some 20 years ago, where you could choose either to run them with a 3D graphics accelerator, which nowadays is commonly known as a graphics card, or just with a pure power of your CPU, you know, Pentium with 133 megahertz of power. So those of us who couldn't afford the 3D graphics accelerator had to play their games only with the help of CPU, and they looked exactly like this game. So what happened, I don't know. Maybe they started developing the game in 1998, maybe it's a project of a century. Despite that, the gameplay looks cool though. It may be an interesting title after all. Diablo 4 Definitely one of the most anticipated titles, a next-generation action RPG set in a fully realized open world. You will be able to fully customize your hero, change the beard, hair, gender or skin color without any problems. Well, you won't be able to change a gender color though. Wait, what? Good thing is that the game is gory. You will see dead bodies everywhere with the intestines splattered all over the place. Blizzard is known for desexualizing and degorifying its characters and games, so I'm glad to see that the gore is still left. But we never know for how long. In trailers we see one thing, and in reality we might be running over flower fields instead of bloody pools, and Blizzard will be like, yeah, we changed that a bit, we want Diablo 4 to be family friendly. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, 150 dungeons await you in the game. In game which will require you to have an internet connection all the time. That sucks. I know how bad the reconnect function in Hearthstone is, for example. Blizzard fails in this field until this day, so don't get your hopes high up. Path of Exile 2 Rumors are that the game will be released only in 2024, or maybe even a year of 2025. Not much information was given to us since last year, but recently there was a surge of good news. ExileCon 2023, which will take place in July in New Zealand, will be completely dedicated to Path of Exile 2. During this event, not only the whole game will be showcased, with all the significant events and mechanics, but the date of the beta will also be announced. Also, visitors on site can expect to see a playable demo demo for the first time. Not 100% guaranteed, so take your pants and dildos out of the suitcase, don't go to New Zealand just yet. They are planning to showcase the game at Gamescom in Germany next year as well, maybe that is a bit closer to your location. And if you like this video, then for sure you will be interested in similar lists of upcoming RPG games. Choose one now, don't hesitate, let's be friends with benefits, let's ride each other. And now thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye!